Hey guys, this is Bridget from the DeVay Homestead. Welcome back. Today I have for you the St. Patrick's Day Leprechaun hat. It is cute. It has braids on the sides. It's got little rosettes on the end of our braids. Got a belt buckle on our little belt area here. It looks complicated, but it's actually really easy to do. So let's get started. To start our hat, I'm using this Burnt Pumpkin, and it's a number four worsted weight. So I'm using two strands together, and the way I do that is I pull one strand from this end and one strand from the side. That way I only have to use one ball of yarn. And if you'd like, you can use two balls of yarn or however you would like. So to get our hat started, we're gonna take our yarn and make a slip knot and place that slip knot on our anchor peg and secure. For our cast on, I'm using the double E wrap method of the cast on. If you would you like to use a different method, you can. To do our double E wrap method, we are going to take our working yarn and come behind our first peg and we are going to wrap the peg twice and knit off then gently pull our working yarn. And I'm just going to repeat that all the way around till every peg is cast on. Finish your cast on and then meet me back here and we will begin our hat. Once our orange is casted on, now we're ready to do rows one and two, which are all the rows we're going to do in our hair color. For row one, it's going to be a knit row, and in the body of the hat, we are using the E-wrap version of our knit stitch. So we're going to E-wrap, and since we're doing several in a row, we can go ahead and wrap several in a row, and then knit off. And we're going to do the whole row in our knit stitch. Once we finish row one, we can go ahead and take our starting yarn off the anchor peg and push that to the center of our loom and just let it hang and we'll weave that in when we finish our hat. So that was row one. For row two, we're going to do the purl stitch. For our purl stitch, we're going to bring our working yarn below the, the loop that is on the peg we are going to take our hook, we are going to come underneath the loop that is on the peg, we are going to go over the working yarn, scoop it up, take the old loop off and the new loop on, and gently pull. So we're going to do that all the way around. So go ahead and finish off this row and then meet me back here. Once I'm finished up my pearl row, now we're ready to do the color change to green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off my orange, and you can do your color change any way you'd like. This is just the way I'm going to do mine. I'm going to take the green, and I'm going to make a slip knot, and I'm going to place that slip knot either on the last peg that I knit it or the one next to it. Either one will work. And then I'm going to take my two tails, the orange and the green, and I'm going to tie those together in a knot. And I'm going to take, I know this is a little hard to see green on green, but you're going to take your slip knot off of the peg and then pull out the knot. Now we're ready to start knitting with our green. You can either put your tail 
in your hat and then when you're finished you can weave it in or you can just hold the tail with your new working yarn and it'll just weave in as you're knitting which is what I'm going to do. So for our first row of green is going to be a knit stitch. So go ahead and move your loops down from your previous row to give you room to e-wrap. Just snip that a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to e-wrap and knit off this whole row. And just whenever my green runs out, don't worry about this. After we finish the hat, wherever we see those little tails sticking out, we will snip those off. So go ahead and finish your first row, which is a knit row and then meet me back here. I finished my first row of the green. Now the next two rows is going to be a knit two, purl two, repeat. So we're going to e-wrap for our two knit stitches and then I'm, I like to leave these knit stitches on and then when I finish the whole row, I'll go back and knit off my knit stitches it just works faster for me that way. If you would like to knit them off now, then go ahead and knit them off. So we're going to do two knit stitches and then two purl stitches. E-wrap for my knit stitches and then two purl stitches. So you want to repeat this for two rows. So go ahead and finish off your two rows and then meet me back here. Now I'm ready for the fourth row of the green. What we're going to do on this row is we're going to start off the row with a purl one And then we're going to do the same repeat that we did on the previous row where we're going to knit two, purl two, and we're going to continue the knit two, purl two all the way around till we get to our last pegs. And then when we get to our last pegs, I'll show you what that looks like. So knit two, purl two all the way around. So I'm at the end of my row and I just finished a purl two, knit two, purl one. So your last peg is going to be a purl one. So what we did on that row is start it with a purl one, then we did knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way to the end, and where we knit two and purl one on our last peg. So I'm going to go ahead and knit off all my knit stitches, and then Meet me back here and we're going to do the black band. So now I finished my four rows of green and we're ready to change colors to black for our black band. For the black, I'm using a number five chunky yarn, so I'm only going to be using one strand. I prefer to use the chunky yarn in just one strand. If at all possible, I just can't find a green or hair color that I like, so for those is why I'm using the worsted weight. But for black is really easy to find the chunky yarn. I really like this Charisma yarn by Loops and Thread. You can find it on Amazon or at Michaels, and I just really like this yarn. So I did my color change just like before, and then just like last time I'm going to use the tail in and weave it as I go along. So I'm going to push these down 
and our first row of black is going to be a knit row. So with your black, and I'm going to take my tail and my working yarn, and I'm going to e-wrap for my knit row. So once we're finished our first black row, we're ready to go to our second black row, which is going to be a purl row. So for our second row of black, you're just going to purl every peg on the row. So go ahead and finish your second row of black and then meet me back here. So I'm just finishing up my second row of my black. So now I've completed two rows of my black. I did a knit row and a purl row. I'm going to repeat that three more times to give me a total of eight rows in my black. So go ahead and do three more repeats of knit one row, purl one row, and then meet me back here and we'll go back to our green. I finished up my eight black rows and now I'm going to do a color change back to green. And now we're ready for the rest of the hat. So the first thing I'm going to do with the green is I'm going to do one row of a knit stitch and the reason that is is because I just finished up with a purl stitch, if I went straight to the pattern that we're going to do for the rest of the hat, it would leave little dash lines. It would kind of look like this, like the inside of the hat here, but it would be on the outside. And we don't want that. We want it to do a color change that's nice and, and smooth. So we're going to do one row of green in our knit stitch before we move on to our pattern to take care of that. So go ahead and finish one row of green in a knit stitch and then we'll start our pattern. Once we finish our one green row of knit stitch, now we're ready to start our pattern. Our pattern for the rest of the body of this hat is going to be an eight row repeat. Um, and just to show you, I have all these hanging here. I'll usually go ahead and make a slip knot with all my tails just to kind of keep them together and out of my way. So you can do that or not. Okay, for our pattern, for rows one and two are going to be the same as each other and it's going to be two knit, two purl. So two knit, and then two purl. So re go ahead and do your two knit, two purl all the way around and do that for two rows and then meet me back here and we'll move on to rows three and four. I just finished rows one and two of our green. Now we're going to move on to rows three and four. This is going to look just like what we did in the beginning of the hat where we purl one then we're going to do a knit two, purl two repeat, so 
So we're going to start with a purl, then we're going to do a knit two, purl two, and we're going to repeat knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, all the way till we get to the end, and we're going to knit two, purl one. So we're going to do that for rows three and four. So go ahead and finish those two rows and then meet me back here. I just finished up rows three and four and now we're ready for rows five and six. For five and six, we are going to do a purl two, knit two repeat all the way around for those two rows. So we're going to purl two, knit two, all the way around, and then we just keep repeating it. Purl two, knit two, all the way around for those two rows. So complete those two rows, and then meet me back here. I just finished up rows five and six, and now we're ready for rows seven and eight. For rows seven and eight, we're going to start off with one knit stitch. Then we are going to purl two, then knit two, and then we're going to keep repeating our pattern. So we did one knit, and then we're going to do the pattern of to purl, to knit, to purl, to knit, all the way around. And then when we get to the very end, we're going to end in one knit stitch. So we start it with one knit stitch, to purl, to knit, to purl, to knit, to purl, to knit, ending in one knit stitch. So go ahead and do that for rows seven and eight, and then meet me back here. I just finished the eighth row of my eight row repeat. From here on out, I'm going to continue to do the eight row repeat until I get the length of hat that I want. When I get the length of hat that I want, or about a quarter of an inch from that length, then I'm going to stop where I'm at in my seven, eight row repeat, and it doesn't matter if you're not finished the eight rows. You don't have to complete all eight rows. You can stop after row five, row three, it doesn't matter. But then when I'm finished where I want, I wanna finish up with one row of just knit stitch. That's gonna help when we do our drawstring bind off. It's going to make it look better and go easier. So go ahead and keep doing your eight row repeat till you get the length that you want, then one row of a knit stitch, and then meet me back here for our drawstring bind off. I just finished the body of my hat, and then when I got to the amount of rows I want, I did one row of our E-wrap knit stitch, and now I'm going to do my drawstring bind off. Once I finish my drawstring bind off, then I have to weave in all my little tails we have here. And since I made knots when I did the color change, for those I don't need to make another knot. I can just simply weave those in. But the, the hair color one that I started with in the beginning that one I'm going to make a knot and weave that in to get it nice and secure. This one I can just cut off because I, I used it when I was um, knitting. I just had it with the other string.
So go ahead and weave in all your ends and then meet me back here. Once we're finished weaving in all our tail ends, we can turn our hat right side out and the body of our hat is complete. With our yellow, we're going to make the belt buckle. I'm using a number five yarn, it's a chunky yarn, so I'm using one strand. If you want, you can use, uh, if you're using like a number four worsted weight yarn, you can do that, but then you might want to use a smaller gauge loom because that's going to affect how wide your I cord is, so it just depends on your preference. But using this loom, I'm going to leave a long tail about 36 40 inches, and then I'm going to make a slip knot and place it on my anchor peg. The reason I'm using a, a long tail is because we're going to use that to connect it to the hat. Also, if your loom does not have an anchor peg, you can just use one peg as the anchor peg and then we're going to use the next two to do our eye cord. But I have an anchor peg, so I'm just going to put that right there. And the eye cord is super simple to make. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn and we are going to e-wrap two pegs. So just like we've done e-wraps before, we're going to e-wrap two pegs. Now we're going to take our yarn and we're going to bring it back to peg one and e-wrap peg one and then go behind peg two and wrap peg two. So it's like we're doing a figure eight. Now we should have two loops on each peg. We're going to knit off. And then once I knit off, I can take my working yarn and I can tighten that up. I can also take this off my anchor peg and I'm just going to push this to the back and bring it inside my loom. So from here, that we can call that row one. Total, we're going to do 23 rows, so that was row one. So to do our next row, our yarn is kind of in between the two pegs. We are going to go to the left and e-wrap peg one and then bring it back to the center and then e-wrap peg two and bring it back to the center. And we're just going to keep repeating that till we get 23 rows. Once I yarn off, knit off each of these, I want to take my tail and pull it down. So I'm just pulling that I cord that's going to start coming down here. So row three, we want to take this and e-wrap peg one, e-wrap peg two, and knit off. And I have a separate video all about how to do the I cord um, in more detail. I'm going through it kind of quick here. So if you want to watch that video, you can. Okay, that was row three. Now row four, same thing. We're going to take our yarn, e-wrap peg one, e-wrap peg two, and knit off. And pull. And you can see that I cord starting to form. So that was row four, so we need 19 more rows. So go ahead and do that and then meet me back here. So I just finished 24 rows. Now I'm going to take my loop off of peg two and put it on peg one and then knit off. Now I'm going to get my scissors and I'm going to cut my working yarn. Once I cut my yarn, I'm going to take my working yarn, pull it through the loop, and take this off of the loom and pull. And you have finished 
the I chord that's going to be the buckle. So now what we want to do is take the end that we just finished and we want to put that onto a yarn needle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my buckle a complete circle and then we will form it and sew it to the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one end that's on the yarn needle and I'm going to join it to the other end. So I want to keep, if you look at the I cord, it looks like a box, like a tube. So you have four sides like that. I want to keep the sides like that with the side I don't want it to twist. I want it to lay nice and flat. So I'm going to lay it nice and flat. And then join this in. I'm going to sew it into this side. So the way I'm going to do that is just feed it through the loops on the other side. And then just pull it together. And then I can take my other end and put it on a yarn needle and feed it into the other side. Now I have the two connected together and from here I can make a knot in my short yarn. So I'm going to take my short one and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to make a knot in the back to secure it. And then I'm going to take my long yarn and I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the back side, make a knot to secure it. So then we have the two sides together making one, one circle. So then we're going to place that on the hat and we're going to form it into whatever shape we want, which is like we want it to be a rectangle. So what we're going to do is start sewing it to the hat, and then when we get to the ends, the sides, we'll shape those with our hand, and then we'll secure it down so that it looks like a rectangle. And I'm going to use my long end to start sewing it and secure it down. But I'm also going to leave this in in case I run out of yarn on this side. I'll have yarn on this side to secure it. So I just, if you ever watch my videos, I always like to have extra yarn as opposed to having less yarn. So where you have where the two join, you can put that in a corner. Or you can put it, this part right here, you can put it in a corner or in the center, wherever. I'm going to put it in the corner so it's not as obvious in the corner. So I'm going to just kind of shape it a little bit first to see how I want it. And if I want, I can go ahead and take some yarn needles and secure it to my hat just to kind of keep it in place when I'm sewing.
So you can do this or not do this if you want. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing it to my hat. Starting in this corner, and I'm just going to sew it to the hat by just going into the hat, making sure I don't go through the bottom layer. And I just want to attach it straight to the hat. You can go through these loops right here, or you can go through the side loops or just the back loops, however you want to attach it to your hat. I'm just going to go straight through the center loops like that. And this is where you can kind of play and fix it the way you want it. You also could take this loop and start sewing this way and then meet up here. So you just kind of have to play with it. So see how I went into the corner to make that corner be a little more squared off like that. And then I'm going to come back through the center of the loop and continue on. So finish sewing on your buckle and then meet me back here. Once we have our buckle sewed on, we are going to put the braids on our hat. So if we've done this on the 36 peg loom, we should have 36 loops here at the bottom. The way the braids are going to work is we're going to mark off seven pegs here that are not going to have any braids on it. They're going to be empty. Then we're going to go this way and we're going to put on 12 braids on the 12 loops here. We're going to put braids on the 12 loops here and then in the very back there'll be five more loops that will not have braids on it. But let's just start with one, one thing at a time. So in the center I have marked off seven loops. So those are the loops that I'm not going to do braids on. So I'm going to start here and go to the right and I'm going to do the next 12 loops. And in each loop, we are going to do a braid. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. We are going to need a crochet hook. And you're going to need a tape measure or something to measure out. Just like I did in the beginning, I'm going to use two of my yarn strings together because it's easier to, to cut two at a time because that's what we are going to be putting on, attaching onto the hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 40 inches from these two strands. And I don't want to measure holding my yarn pulled tight because then when I lay it down and it bunches up, it's going to be shorter. We want 40 inches when it is just sitting there even. So if I were on my table, I would measure out 40, but since the camera doesn't show that much, I'm going to do 20 and then 20 more. So right there I have 40 inches and then I'm going to cut, let me grab my scissors, and I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to fold that in half. So I'm going to take my strands together 
and I'm going to fold that in half. So I have two strands together, 40 total inches, but when I fold it in half, it should be 20 inches on my measuring tape. So I'm going to hold these loops together, and this is how I'm going to attach it to my hat. Now you can do this a couple ways. You could measure out all your strands and then attach them to the hat. It's easier for me to measure, cut, and then attach it to my hat and then repeat that over and over because if I have a bunch of these strands just laying around and then I go to grab them to attach them to the hat, I'm gonna have to re um, put the ends together and, and see where I'm at. So it's just easier to do one at a time. So the way we're going to attach it to the hat is we're going to use our crochet hook. Okay, I'm going to try to zoom in here so you can see this. So this is where I have marked off. This is part of the seven I don't want to do. So I want to start with this one. And you can see how I have the loops on the edge, as you can see. And remember, these two strands together is one because we counted it as one yarn. If I go through these loops here, just like that, and it pulls down, it's kind of making a little bit of a hole that I don't want. So what I'm going to do is just, you can just hook it through the loop just like that, but I also like to grab this back one as well, and I'll show you that. So if I grab the big loop, there's a little knot right here where it connects to the next loop. I'm going to go, there's a small little loop behind that, and I'm going to grab that one as well. And the reason is, you'll see here in a second how much nicer that's going to look. So I can take the yarn needle out. I'm going to grab my two yarns. I'm going to pull it through like this. Then I'm going to grab the yarn and pull it through my loops and I can use my fingers. And then I'm going to tighten that up. So we have the first one attached. Now I'm going to show you the difference. See here, if this pulls down, there's not a big hole. Whereas if I just grab this one loop, see how it creates like a big hole? And I don't want that. So I'm going to grab that back loop. If that's too confusing and you just want to do the big loops and not grab the other one behind, then that is totally fine as well. So I'm just going to keep doing that 12 loops on this side. So I'm going to keep going to the right. I'm going to keep going to the right and I'm going to keep putting those two strands that are 40 inches long folded in half. Take my crochet hook into the next big loop. Again, find where that little knot is and the loop behind the knot. And I'm going to grab that one. It's kind of hiding under there. It's not this loop under here. And at some point it really doesn't make a difference as long as you're consistent. If you're grabbing the same loops each time, then they're all going to be uniform. If you want right here, instead of going through with your crochet hook, once you pull the loops through, you can use your fingers and grab and pull those through and then tighten it up. So now we have two and we're just going to continue that on 12 times. I'm just finishing up 12 sets, so let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, and 12. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the front of our hat where we marked off, and if your yarn needle fell, fell out, then you would just count again. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are empty. So I'm going to start at the one next to this one, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, doing 12 going this way. And then when you're finished in the back, you should have five open ones in the back that have no braids. So go ahead and do the same thing. Start here and go around 12 loops just like we did before. So we have all the braids done, 12 on each side. Now we're going to braid her hair, and you can do this, you can put it on a mannequin, you can try it on a child, or you can just lay it down. Um, I'm gonna try to do it here on this mannequin and see if she doesn't fall down. A lot of times I'll have my husband hold the mannequin head while I'm doing it, or I'll try it on my son and then braid it. So we're going to divide it into four here, four in the center, and four on the other side. So we have three sections, four, four, and four. We're going to take this front section and we want to curl it like this because we want it to look like hair and like it's kind of coming back from her face. So we want to roll that. and then set that on top of the center one. Then we're gonna take the back hair and we're just going to pull that over and we're gonna start braiding the hair. This one we're also going to take and just kind of spin it over a little bit. And then we're going to start to braid. At this point, I could probably take it off the mannequin and just set it down and braid it. And again, it, it's a little bit easier if someone holds the hat for me because I'm kind of pulling with the braid. And I'm just going to continue to braid it down And you can stop whenever you feel like your braid is long enough. I'm gonna make it a little bit longer here. Okay, so when I get about right here or wherever you want, to finish this off, I'm going to take a couple of strands, like two or three strands from the side here. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to wrap it around. I'm going to leave my finger right here on the front. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. So I'm going to take two or three strands here, I've got two, and I'm going to wrap it around my finger, and I'm going to pull it around the other side, and I'm going to bring it underneath where my finger was at, and I'm going to pull that through. 
I'm going to take those two strands and I'm going to pull Let me flip it over to the back and I'm going to pull it really tight so now I'm on the back side of the braid and just flip the hat over so I've got those two strands and I'm going to take two other strands that are just hanging from the ones hanging and I'm going to tie a knot and just tighten that up as I do that. Okay, now we have it connected together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here with this, I'm not gonna do any more, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. That way, when I'm doing the other side, I can match up the links and make sure I get the links the same. And then after that, we are going to trim off the hair. And that's when you want some really, really sharp scissors. Then we're going to go back and we're going to make something to decorate this little part where she would have her little ponytail. So go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Let me zoom out here. So go ahead and do the same thing on this side, dividing it into three sections, four, four, and four. And then this time you're going to spin it out that way away from her face. So go ahead and do that and then meet me back here and I'll show you the rest. I'm going to fold that over. I'm gonna roll that across this one and then bring the one all the way from the right over. Twist this one a little bit. and then start to braid. So I've got my hat turned on the side and I'm just going to braid this until it matches the other length. And then I'm going to do the same thing before where I take two or three strands, bring them over my thumb, bring them underneath, and tighten it up. Okay, it's about the same length. I'm going to turn it over to the back side. Tighten that up. Take another two, tie it together, make a knot. And this is where it's really good to have extra yarn than to have too little yarn. Okay, now I'm going to give her a little haircut here, however long you want the hair after the braid. Match those up. And now we have her braids are done.
And I'll show you what that looks like when we put it on the mannequin. See how nice the braids go here away from the little girl's face that's wearing it and it's going to look awesome. To make the little rosette spinny thing that's going to go right here, I don't want it to be too frilly of a rose so it's going to be more of like a circle thing which you'll see here in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another eye cord just like the one that we made on the front of her hat except this one we're going to make it 30 rows and you're going to need two of these so go ahead and rewind the video and make watch the eye cord part of it if you don't remember and make two of these that are 30 rows long and you want to leave a little bit of a tail a good length tail on both ends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I've already got it on my yarn needle, and I'm going to bring it behind there. So I'm going to kind of cross it behind. I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to, with my needle, I'm going to secure it to the back here. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to roll up my curly cue and secure it as I go. So what I'm wanting is not for it to lay flat on the side, but I want it to kind of have some dimension as I go around and for that to kind of stick up like that. So I'm going to start to spin it around and on the back side, I'm going to sew these two loops together. So let me kind of just show you what that looks like. So I'm just going to grab a loop from this one and a loop from that one and just secure it. And as I spin this around, I'm just going to keep securing loops from this one to the one next to it. And I'm doing that on the back side so I can keep turning it to the front side, which I'll show you here in a second and seeing how I want it to spin. So see how now that's connected? Those are all connected. And I'm just spinning it around like that and then turning it over and connecting it. You can make a little frilly flower if you want or a row or a um, bow or whatever you want but I just like the way this looks on this one because it's a little more simple and I just think it matches. So see how I'm kind of letting this part not be connected so it kind of sits up. Turn it over and I'm going to do this till I get towards the end, but I'm going to leave a little tail of the eye cord because we're going to use that to wrap it around her hair. And I'll show you that here in just a second. So I can probably go ahead and do one more loop. Okay, so you see we have our little thing and I want it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that side down for a second and I'm going to take the eye cord and wrap it around. And what I did is I put a yarn needle on this tail over here and I'm going to bring it in. And I can see that this is too long. So I'm just going to wrap this one a little bit more and then keep checking to where I get it where I want. cord around and that should be just perfect. 
So if you can see there, I've got my I cord around. And I'm going to take this side. Let me take this off of the mannequin. Okay, I'm going to take this side and I'm going to sew it into my flower. And I'm going to tighten that up. I'm going to get that nice and tight, go back into my flower and come down on this side, connecting it here. And there we have this cute little kind of 3D rose looking adornment here. I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to th go through here and secure this a little bit more because I don't want it to come off. And once I get this nice and secure on both sides, I can make a knot. So I'm going to do that side, and then I'm going to do this side. And for one of these, I want to make sure that I don't want this to just pull off. So I want to make sure I go around. See that right there, that loop that we made? We want to make sure after this part is to there, we want to go through. that so that we're securing it to the hair so it won't just slip off. And I'm going to do that a couple times. So I'm going to go through the I-cord and then I'm going to go down through the hair where I have that knot so it's securing it to the hair. Now on this side, I'm going to finish up making sure that this is where I want it to be. I'm going to go through here one more time. And now I can just take these two and sew them in and make knots and weave them in, but if they're on the same side, I can go ahead and knot them together. Weaving them on the yarn needles. So I have them knotted right here and I'm going to go ahead and weave in these ends and then um, cut it off. And I'm just checking to see that it is hooked to that knot. And then I can just weave this in. And then just cut it off. And I'll do that for the other one as well. And once we finish putting on both of our little rosette things. Our hat is done. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys later. Bye!